Okay, we are live. Yep. Thank you all for attending. Should be an interesting little thing I'm going to talk about. So let's see how you deal with it. We have a lot, uh, as you've been watching, you know, everything that I've said is going to happen is happening. Yeah. And uh, the devil has been caught. Yeah. And uh, all the legion now is externalizing. So it's pretty easy for you to see someone who would be standing next to Hitler or Mussolini is like, you know, Bobert and, you know, all these different people that are just talking really stupid, crazy stuff and they can't help it. And they have to repeat each other because they're loyal to stupidity and belief systems that, you know, are led by absolute delusion and illusion. Yeah. And it's all coming out of Trump. So it's a psychic force. Yeah. And these people don't have a choice to jump off that train. Yeah. They're on it. They're passengers. Yeah. And they're terrorists. Yeah. They're fallen angels, people. They're all angels. We're all angels. Yeah. Except this group is fallen angels. And there's a load of them. There are a load of them. And most of them are right here in America, but a good number of them are all around the world. Yeah. But we've got some pretty interesting characters here. Yeah. And they're, they're just, you know, they're like fish caught in a tank and they didn't know that there was going to be a, any kind of limitation whatsoever to their existence. And it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller every day, every day. And the things that they have to say are coming from that astral illusion from that astral plane yeah they're just bouncing off the walls and they can't help but say those things do those things and they're filled with hate yeah they are full hate and they and all they could see is that anybody who's not them are the very people they are yeah because that's the astral plane it's a mirror, yeah, and lies are lies. So a lie has to be the opposite of the truth, yeah. So these people are only expressing, you know, what it is that he's channeling, yeah. And and it, it's such a orderly form of channeling, yeah. Because if you know the chakras and you know the rays, you know how the glamours work, and you know those particular things. And you know from my teaching, I'm telling you, these people only have three chakras. Three. That's it. You know? And you can't get very far on three chakras. But when the rest of you only have two, and you're, you bring in the third, you know, because you're devoted. You know? And because you're devoted, you get empowerments from that other chakra. You know, that devotion chakra. Whether it be, you know, your your relationship in anything, whether your job or your mom, your dad or anything, yeah? It's that sixth ray that is that major astral body chakra that we just go from life after life after life and keep getting hit with it. And we're all in a movie, you know? You know, where people today, if you really study it, you'll, you'll see that the group who incarnated from 1970 to 1980 for within a 20 year period, they all want to commit suicide. Look into it. They're the highest group in the world that has reached a position in their own consciousness where they feel they have absolutely nothing to live for. Nothing. Yeah? They'll put on all the tattoos, they'll watch all the glamour TikTok, and they'll do all the Twitter bullshit, and then they'll shoot themselves. That's really common, people. Look into it. I'm not kidding. This is our people. Masses of people. And where do they come from? Where do they come from? They were born in the 70s. Well, you just got to go back just 70 to 80 years. That's, that's when they were born last time. In that life. Yeah? So go back 70 or 80 years. They were born in the 1900s. Or 1890s. Yeah? And what went on during that time? You know, First World War, Second World War. Bam, but a bam. Yeah. Prior to that, what went on during that time? The Civil War. 
human rights, devastating scenarios of earth changes, all kinds of stuff was horrible, horrible, horrible. Yeah. And we lived through, you know, the Dust Bowl. We lived through, you know, oh, my God, you know, all the stock market has fallen. Oh, my God, you know. Look at here. We don't, we, no one has any money. And, and the earth is failing us completely. That's, that's the consciousness of these people. They've come back. And those who made it through that process, and those are usually people in their 50s and 60s, and then they die, and they reincarnate, and they reincarnate in the 30s. You know? So we got a blend of people. The older ones from that cycle, and the younger ones from that cycle. And they go through hell. Literally. Go through hell. They make it through that, they go through the First World War, the Second World War, the Korean War. The war with Japan, the nuclear war, the Cold War. And that's just to 1960. 1960. Yeah. These are millions and millions of people who lose their lives and go into PTSD and not one person on this planet understands it. So shell shock. Yeah, that's his name. Shell shock. What? <laughs> yeah, it scares me every time I hear a gun or a slamming door or I'm just freaking out because I, I heard it so much and I'd seen so much and I did it, did it, and it just comes down to these. It's shell shock. You know, millions and millions from one war after another. Your grandfather, your father, your brother, your uncle, all of them for generation after generation. You know, went through that. And if and, and in that process, there were people on the other side of the world who were serving Hitler and Mussolini and the five main dictators that last until the 60s. Until the 60s. Most of the people that, that were in the German process didn't get caught. The Catholics let them go. They put him through Argentina, they put him to Portugal, they put him to Spain. They left him in Italy. They made him priests. Made him priests, people, made him priests. Senior people in the SS, senior people that worked for Hitler were allowed to be free. Same thing with Mussolini, who actually made the process for there to be a pope, for there to be a place that they call the holy place, you know, the place. And that was Mussolini did that. Mussolini passed the law. Mussolini made it that way. Yeah. So all this shit is left over from extreme evil, extreme evil. And all those people s were sacrificed. Jews were sacrificed. Yeah. People of different race and different color and different relationships of mind and culture were sacrificed. Yeah? Used as slaves or put into enslavement camps. Yeah? And these are the people who are here now. People who were born in the 70s. People who were born in the 80s. There's no place for them to go. They come from that experience. They come from being in a holocaust or being a person who did the Holocaust? Being the person who did it. Yeah. Yeah, being the person who dropped Nagasaki. Being the peop all the people who got hit at Nagasaki. Yeah. All of that comes around. It affects us psychologically. It affects you. PTSD, if you don't clear it before you die, you usually die by committing suicide or drinking. So then you die. Well, guess what? You reincarnate. That's terrible. You bring that shit back? In the 70s? Look where we were at in the 70s. Grunge. Grunge. Everybody wore black and all the girls wore white skin. Yeah, the guys had black makeup around their eyes. You know, that was normal shit. 
70s and 80s. Yeah. Thank God for Europe. That's where it originated. Because they were the ones who did it. You know, all the wars were started there. All the kings and queens, the history comes back around. Now we're all paying for the lifestyle of Europe. We're all paying for that. Imagine you go out, you're, you know, you're Denmark or you're some country, you know, like England, you know, and you go out and you take over these countries. Well, guess how many people were enslaved and killed and murdered and destroyed and taken off their land and thrown into another place and forgotten all about? Greenland, Iceland, those are really large pieces of land. Yeah, and they're not owned by Greenland. They're not owned by Iceland. Yeah, Alaska is not owned by Alaska. It's not Alaska. It's a territory of America and Russia. Yeah, it's combined, America and Russia. Yeah, so we have all these places where the whole world has been absorbed by territorial control. Yeah by us going about doing the horrible things that we've done. Horrible things. All the horrible things that have gone on. Look at all the millions of American Indians that have been slaughtered and lost. Yeah, horrible things, horrible things. Yeah. All of Spain, all of Mexico. Yeah, the war between America and Mexico. Horrible thing, horrible thing. Yeah, and those are our past lives. We don't get through those past lives. We die. Yeah? And then we come back. Yeah? And then we're, everybody's kind of really confused. Like, how come there's such a large number of young youth who have tattoos over all their body who claim to be the opposite sex of who they are? And they build three or four different levels and kinds of sex as, as though gender is now a genetic scenario. And I was born this way. I was born this way. Yeah. Yeah. They're claiming that that's it. That they understand genetic reality. And genetic reality is where their head's at. And the decision that they make is ruling over the genetic reality. Yeah. So this creates, you know, this is all coming from PTSD. It's coming from people that are so wiped down uh, in life. And they come back and they, you know, what's there to live for? You know, you're, you're born in the 70s, you come back, you're, you grow up and you get in the 80s and everybody wants to jump on top of each other when they're dancing. You know, punching each other when they're dancing. I mean, whatever happened to rock and roll and stuff? And, just sitting around, <laughs> having fun, talking, you know. Instead, you know, there, there'd be this grunge, you know. And there'd be this rave and there'd be all these different things that had to do with extreme emotions and hostility and aggression. It had nothing to do with music, yeah. And in the middle of that, there was perversion. Men dressing up as girls, you know, going into clubs. You know, singing with music that wasn't music. It was all electrically created with terrible sounds to it. Terrible sounds. But it, you're, you know, you're, you're mingling with some extremely impure beings that from your previous life, they put you in a chamber and killed you and tortured you. And now they're dancing around as a girl and they're a guy because they're so perverted. They're so disturbed and they're wanting to be in charge of this world, their life, whatever life they're in. And most of these people, they all come from previous lives, every single one. Imagine you're a general and you, you know, you're working with Hitler. Where, where are you going to go in 1970s? How, how many places you got to dictate? How many Hitlers you got to follow along with? No, you're going to go into the movie industry. You're going to go into the music industry. You're going to go into an industry that allows you to be the pervert for sex magic and money magic and hostility and aggression and just completely act as though you're an artist. 
But in reality, you're just painting hostility and aggression and death. Look at our music. Look at the industry of movies. Yeah? This is all that generation come back. The generation before that, it was like, you know, you know, pretty neat shit, you know. Elvis Presley, you know, Bob Hope, you know, Bing Crosby. They reincarnated from another life where there wasn't war. It was a different period of time, yeah. And that cycle, when people come back, some have gone through horrible scenarios in previous lives. Others have done their best to be good friends to other people. You know, and they're few and far between, but they exist. And they, in time, become the leaders of the world because they're unique and they're way shores. They support people to change. They have strength and courage. Yeah? And that, you know, the, those are people that have never had the ability to move forward in life. Yeah, because of the weaker side of the world. You know, we are in a process to where the dark lodge, the fallen angels, do everything, say things, do things, in order to create chaos in the world. And they establish it through a state of separation, a separation that doesn't exist. Like a separation, they won't accept the separation between male and female. So it goes in this whole other thing. They won't accept the separation between the reality of here they've got Democrats and here's Republicans, well, they create separation. They won't accept the fact that they created a separation. One is hate and one is trying to work it out. They're trying to live by democracy. Yeah, trying. Yeah, moving forward, thinking of the people, doing things that they can that would be better for people. Yeah, yeah, that would be democracy. You know, for the people, by the people, that kind of thing. It's hard to follow those rules, you know, when you're a greedy bunch of shits that just want money and greed, you know, and take advantage, get into the president's situation, and all of a sudden you're just going to party. There's been a lot of presidents. You study the presidents, there's a lot of presidents who become president, and all they do is party. They do nothing, absolutely nothing. Yeah? I mean, go back. They do nothing. Many of them did absolutely nothing. Yeah? And then there were those that really, you know, like Roosevelt and Truman, you know, many of them really gave it their best, you know, while they were in the job. They weren't, they weren't, you know, no one's trained to be the president. But when you're in that position, there's loyalty and right relationship and honor and position of respect toward what it is the position is. You know, that grows over time. But in the beginning, it's not really like that. They started off wanting to be a king, mm -hmm. wanted to never be able to be taken off. And, and that wasn't Washington's idea. That was Europeans' idea who were sitting there going, well, yeah, you know, why not be a king? That's the only thing we've ever done before. Yeah. So changes, depending on who's making the change. Yeah. Very rare do we go toward democracy. And this is where we're at. Yeah. So democracy has an outpouring process to it. It, it has uh, influences that end war. Yeah. Influences that further the process of saving the earth. And, and when you're in an ignorant state and you're going around violating the earth 24-7 for greed purposes and everything, and, and slowly but surely you are woken to a reality, you know, to where there is a problem here. You know, there is a greenhouse effect. There is this and that, you know. And we got to take in consideration, we have to give up a lot in order to move toward that direction. We cannot continue with coal. We cannot continue in these directions, you know. But that's, that's a long time before we get to that conversation. You know, people don't really move to that direction because they, they don't think about it, you know. They just keep thinking, it's a long time until we have to do something like that, you know. But it's, it's not true, you know. And in our process, in humanity's process, it's a matter of 
completely eliminating this aspect of the astral plane that creates separation. Yeah. We're not aware that it's there. We're not aware how to stop it, you know, all of that. But I'm here to explain that the only way that it's cleared is through Christ. Yeah. So it's a transmission of energy. Yeah. The future is glory. Yeah. The future is not fame and glory. The future is glory. Yeah. So the process of the future constantly comes into the effect of humanity being blessed by that future. Yeah. The effect that now, you know, we, we have a variety of electric cars to go by and the price of those electric cars are on $120,000. They're $32,000 and they get 300 miles to a charge. And, and, you know, you wait another four or five years and you can get them half that price because they're used and the batteries are still working really well. You know, so these are just in short periods of time these changes take place. And that's because the Dark Lodge is dying. Everybody dies, people. Yeah. The difficulty is that we have the biggest problem in the group between incarnation of 70s through the 80s. We got a problem. Those people are willing to destroy the world. They're willing to destroy the world. Fully and completely. I mean bombs, guns, ammo, you know, just in their mind, they're thinking, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do this. Civil war, we're going to, you know, I'm against this. And all hate starts bleeding in to collective groups like the KKK and others. You know, which gets built up into a national religion or something like that, like Green and others that are pushing this national uh, Christian movement. Well, in reality, that's the KKK. Go back in time, the national Christian movement is the KKK. There's not another movement. It's its name. That's the name of the KKK. But you've been overshadowed by ignorance to not think for yourself. And you hear shit, you know, you, you see Mar Logo go down, you see all the FBI go in, and then you hear on the news, that's probably good for Trump. That's probably a good thing for Trump. Where's that come from? That comes from England. News from England. Yeah. I don't know. Why, why are they so evil? News from Australia, New Zealand, you know, they, they just go, Biden, you know, he's going to croak any minute. You know, he's not really alive. That's a fake body. They say that. When you say those words, people have to listen to it. And these are from other countries. Russians say the same thing. They're all in league in the same mind, the mind of the planetary logos, Satan. The whole world is interconnected. And if you think you're, you're not supporting it in some way, you're wrong. You're totally wrong because it still exists. You have no control, none. You can have all the heart you want, but the only thing it's going to do for you is keep you alive tomorrow until we close this astral plane. Because you got a thousand percent more dark forces passing through your blood passing through the air that you're breathing, the karma that you have to clean up from your past lives. You're nowhere near it. Haven't even begun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Too busy eating nice food. Too busy eating. Too busy having fun. Too busy. You know, uh, the process of seeing the world without seeing it in the light that I'm trying to shine on this process, that we need to see everybody for what they are. And if we don't discern, discriminate, truly discern and discriminate, yeah, then we have no light that goes out. We're like, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure. Yeah, look at the way there, right now, this is the news of the day. Not that we can tell, Chuck, and hats off to Mark Caputo for getting this for us before the government release. Um, no, no, it's, it, it appears to all line up. It's not a very complicated document other than the statutes that the lawyers know better than the rest of us. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, 
uh, it's just remarkable on so many levels, as you laid out very well. The extent to which very highly classified information was found and seized by the FBI in the president's house. The fact that he's under investigation for potential violations of the Espionage Act and also statutes covering obstruction and a statute involving um, government records that the penalty for which is a ban from holding public office. Now, some people believe that's unconstitutional, but nonetheless worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the fact that, uh, that, you know, the FBI laid out what they were seeking in the warrant um, that in very dramatic and stark language about, you know, national defense information, mishandling of classified information, any evidence of the knowing alteration, destruction or concealment of any government or presidential records. So, I mean, look, th we don't have the affidavit, obviously, so we don't have the really juicy stuff. We don't have the FBI's explanation of why they conducted this search uh, and exactly what evidence mm -hmm. they have that a crime was committed uh, and other aspects of their investigation. But we, we certainly have a case here that that this is a very serious matter, that the president, yeah. former president of the United States, took home a bunch of documents he shouldn't have had. Other presidents uh, just didn't do this. In fact, when they wrote memoirs and they, and they needed to access classified records, they went to sensitive compartmented facilities. They went to military bases. Trump took this stuff home. All right, let me go through a few of this. Act insurrection hearing today. Explosive evidence that Donald Trump planned to lead the march to the Capitol in advance. That's bad for Trump because it undercuts the defense of a rally getting just out of hand. And this was revealed by furtive texts from Trump's own aides. POTUS is going to have us march there slash the Capitol. But POTUS is going to call, just call for it, quote, unexpectedly. Now, it was planned, so it was expected. That text shows exactly how Donald Trump was cooking up a lie to make it look spontaneous. That's also bad because it shows some of Trump's illicit intent by hiding the plan in advance and that the whole march was what Trump turned to after a grave meeting that was plotting a military role in a coup in the United States to take over your country, democracy and government. That's just a small part of what I've got the devil surrounded in. And it, all it is is just the truth. It has nothing to do with anything else. It's just the truth. But the problem is, fallen angels don't know the truth. They don't know that if they try and enter the truth, and the truth is the, the process of democracy. And the truth is the United States government. And the truth is America. Yeah, it's in process and it's radiating, being expressed and under divine rule to manifest the truth so that there's human rights in, in all these states and all those states that have states of consciousness, one dumber than the other. Yeah. Prejudice, bias, culture oriented from their past, from their religion, from their political process, all of that. Yeah, each creating different states that don't like to think that they're anything to do with the state next door. Yeah, that's that separation again. Yeah, so we have an enormous process that democracy has to do is to bring about peace and tranquility in such conditions. Yeah, that's impossible if you really understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, because this requires God. The one person who can govern this is Jesus the Christ, not the president of the United States, not a general or anybody, but they work under him. The way he sees things. Yeah. So I've been expressing, how do I see things? What is going on here? You voted the devil into your presidency. What's going on here? What will be the effect of that? So I tell you, what's the effect of that? Yeah, he's going to hell because the one thing you don't do is walk into a temple and deface it. Bad karma, bad karma. And Washington, D.C. is a temple. It's got an obelisk. It's set up as a temple that gives 
refuge to all the tukus, George Washington, Lincoln, yeah, all the tukus. Yeah, they're all over inside that temple. And every tuku keeps coming back around and takes a position and then we have the House of Representatives and Congress and the Senate and all these processes have the opportunity for them to work in a synthesized way that allows them to take the highest of everything, education, medicine, everything, yeah, all done within the political realm, yeah, giving support, allowing every single state, every single city, every single area yeah, to receive what would be right, yeah, a balance of what is right. Yeah, and it's a governing. Yeah. But if it's the way things are governed now, you know, you got one governor over here who doesn't like this governor over here, you know, like the California governor hates the Florida governor, and are always spouting off on each other, you know, oh, that Republican Florida, you know, you know, oh, that, that stupid Democratic, you know, California, you know, and all it is is a process of fallen angels. And fallen angels, as, as do all people, they die. Yeah. And the thing about fallen angels is that they create death. They create death. So if I raise everybody up, slowly but surely, even if it's 100,000 or even a, up to 100 million per cycle of time, yeah. the cycle of time is usually a generation. It's about 30 to 60 years. 30 to 60 years. Yeah. If you're really slow in the process of your evolution, it's 60 years. Yeah? If you're in the process where you're in your previous life and you were able to move forward, then what you bring back, you'll only have 30 years to recapitulate and start moving forward again. Yeah? But like I said, you know, look at that. First World War, Second World War. Before that, what was going on? Civil War. Yeah. Yeah, that's horrible. Horrible. That's a history of America, our truth. It's our truth. Yeah. But if we keep looking at it, we spent time at the polls. We voted people in and out. We discerned and discriminated the best we possibly could. And in most cases, we knew absolutely nothing. We maybe knew three people on the entire voting ballot. You know, but because that person's a Republican, I'm a voting. You know, so assholes come in. You know, and if you come from, you know, the Civil War, then you're Republican. Yeah. And so is your grandfather. Now is your father. And so is your family. And so is the town you come from and the city you live in. Yeah. And all the statues that are sitting there are all monuments to that relationship. That comes back into your relationship of reincarnation. And it makes it very hard for you. So that's why I'm here, is to teach so that you can realize, realize the past sucks. Super grandiously, it sucks. You know, we can't look at Westinghouse we can't look at Edison. Yeah? We can't look at hardly anything in the past that didn't take advantage and monopolize and destroy the souls of people who were in the same group, but they were the ones actually moving it forward. No credit whatsoever. They're usually placed in prison, you know, usually left without credibility so that they couldn't get another loan. They die like Tesla. Alone in a hotel, you know, eating very little, you know, just making it through the day. Imagine, you know, throughout all of our cycles of time, we have this constant process of reincarnation going on. And we are now at the time of the incarnation, the reincarnation of Jesus the Christ since 1951. So since 1951, even though we've had a big surge in the 70s, through the 80s, of people who lived out the Mussolini, Hitler, five dictator process. They gotta be somewhere. 
they got to be somewhere. And they want power. And power will be found in America. Yeah? You could try and do power in Russia, but it won't work. You can try and do power in Iran, but it won't work. You can try and do power anywhere else. It won't work. You got a king in England. That nah, won't work. You know? So America gives you the opportunity, the dream, the American dream, you know, to become a millionaire or even the president of the United States. Yeah. That's supposedly what the dream is. Yeah. But in reality, we are in a reincarnated state. And we have a heck of a situation that we need to face. And that's the reincarnation of people from the cycle of wars that are back in their bodies and we're not looking at it. We're not considering it. It's everything that has to do with the psychological influence of America. And it's what's causing us to think that we should defund the FBI. Yeah? We should wear guns and everything and go in front of the FBI office and just stand there as though that's a smart thing to do. Yeah? We should do all kinds of aggressive things. Yeah? Go out there in the polling. Carry your guns. Stand there with a sign saying Trump with a flag. With Trump with big muscles. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, total delusion. Yeah? Because these are all warlords. People from war. People from war. What are you going to do with yourself? You know, when you reincarnate and you come from war. And your father was in the war. You were in the war. You could have been the closest friend to Hitler. You could have been a top SS agent. What's the chances? The chances are extremely high. If you're not on one side, you're on the other. You're killing them Nazis. Killing them Japs. Killing them gooks. Yeah. That's got to really get to you. Yeah. 20 years later, you know, you're going to fall in love with one of them. And that's going to just rip you crazy. Now, what am I doing? What am I thinking? This is insane. And you've got to work the karma out. Slowly but surely, we have to work it out. We have to become friends. We have to become brothers and sisters. We have to do this thing in the way that we're meant to. But when we're under the effect of the channeling that's going on right now with Trump, the channeling that's going on is overwhelming the amount of divisiveness. Yeah? Like, look at this. They've gone down, uh, a, they've gone down uh, a, a really extreme and we're in another posture. We're defending the institutions of democracy and we're making democracy work. And that's why today was such an extraordinary day with the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act. I extraordinary indeed. And that was the other big news from today. Tell us what this is going to mean for Americans when the president signs it into law. Oh, I mean, it's amazing. And uh, needless to say, it was done on a totally party line basis because no Republicans would come over to support it. But uh, let's start with this on climate change. We are reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 40 percent by the year 2030. So this is serious, sustained, dramatic investment in alternative renewable energies and financial incentives for us to break from uh, the carbon barons and the oil barons and moving to the kind of energy system that will make life sustainable for human beings on Earth. So that's a miraculous political breakthrough given our 50-50 tie in the Senate and the fact that we just have six or seven vote margin over on the House side. Um, but we went way beyond that uh, because what we did was we have limited um, all Medicare beneficiaries to having to pay no more than $2,000 a year for their prescription drug costs. And there are people who are spending thousands and thousands of dollars a year. So we're saving people thousands of dollars. Specifically for all of my friends out there who have diabetes, we're limiting insulin costs to $35 a month. You cannot be forced to pay 
more than $35 a month. And in order to make all this happen, we are overturning the special interest rider that Republican Billy Towson had built into the Medicare Part D legislation when they said that the government could not negotiate with Big Pharma for lower prescription drug prices in the Medicare program the way that they could do it uh, in Medicaid or the VA. So we got rid of that. Now there will be a real free market in negotiations. We're going to see tens of billions of dollars uh, of savings, and we're going to, again, cap everybody's out-of-pocket prescription drug costs at $2,000 a year, which is just a magnificent breakthrough. And all of it is going to be paid for by uh, just making billionaire corporations pay a minimum tax so they can't get get away with paying zero a year, which so many of them have been doing for so long. Yeah, there's... So imagine, this is all reincarnation, yeah? This is a movie, yeah? Uh, last movie sucked really bad. Lots and lots and lots of wars, one right after another, World War I, World War II, you know, Civil War, holy shit, you know? Everything, hate toward races, you know? Just right there in the city, right there in the town, you had to segregate yourself, yeah? If we didn't have wars, we'd make up wars. We'd always be at war. Always a conflict. Yeah? And that has to get worked out. This is all about karma. And you're in a world of dharma because I'm here. Yeah? So your outcome will be dharmic. They will be dharmic. That's why all those bills got passed. We're going to save those kids. We're going to save all those people. Right now, they're in vans, they're homeless, they're on the street, they're in cars, and they're telling everybody they're happy. <laughs> they're not happy. Yeah? But that's where they're at. That's what they can figure out. They need therapy. And that was the best way to get it. Get back in nature, find yourself, get close to friends, you know? Only good friends. Hang out with them. Enjoy yourself. Get healthier. Yeah? And that's what these guys did. Yeah? So that's been going on now for about eight, nine years. Yeah? This van community, the community of people getting out of their homes because the homes are going up in price and the jobs that you're making, the money that you're making is low. And these are the people that were born in the 70s and the 80s. They're the workforce. You know, they quit. They quit when when and when this virus hit. You know, they just said, "Thank God." You know, I'm not. I don't want to be a waiter. I don't want to be a waitress. I hate my life. Look at all my tattoos. You think I love my life? I got them all up my arm. I can only put it on one arm because I don't know what. You know. Everybody else only does one arm, so that's what I'm doing, you know? Oh, no, I know, I, I know someone that did it on both arms. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Maybe I'll start a craze. You know, it, it is crazy the amount of wasted time and energy that we're influenced by because of past life, past life. So we need to incorporate an understanding that all the things that are happening in the world the coming of electric cars is a blessing from Jesus the Christ. Personally. Yeah? The fact that everybody's going to get solar on their house. Everybody. Everybody. is going to get new roads. New waterways. The forest will get cleaned up. And in it, it'll get riding paths for bikes. All throughout every town, there'll be separate roads. Not on the road that other cars are on, but its own separate roads throughout the entire town with all its little nooks and crannies that get you through special places that would be really neat if you had such a situation. And that's in the mind of these really wonderful people that are working out their karma and their engineers and they're loyal toward the world. They were also in the world during that time. But they didn't kill anybody. They worked it out. Yeah? They came through the other side. 
Yeah. And their karma wasn't the same as those who were in Auschwitz and those who were putting people in Auschwitz and those who were wanting to kill people and died doing it. Yeah. Those are crazy people today. Yeah. But there's a whole lot of them out there that aren't. And they're helping us. And they're under the influence of me and not under the influence of Trump. Yeah. Trump would tell them, don't go be an engineer. I like you dumb. I like it like that. Go, to, go back to the coal mine. You don't want solar. You'd have to get smart. Learn electronics, deal with batteries, you know. You know, maybe, maybe control water, flushing toilets. You know how much that drove him crazy? Limiting water in toilets drove him nuts. Because it's a good thing. Anything that's a good thing keeps people from being engineers. The way he spoke, he put down people in the media. He put down people who wrote. He put down people who were educated. He put down every living person. If you're a girl, he'll put you down. He'll rip you apart and then he'll erase your ass. Yeah, literally. Because yeah, that's what the devil does. And you're, you're so blessed, you actually get to see the devil in the flesh in this life. I'm, I'm, I'm a wonder, you know, I'm, I'm cool, yeah, I say shit and I do shit, I'm a wonder, I'm great, yeah, but I am capable of giving you the show of a lifetime, because we're in a movie, folks, and where I'm interested in dealing with is getting rid of Satan, and the only way that can happen is by externalizing his ass through judgment. So imagine he wants to be president. Well, what happens in his mind of glory as Apollo? He wants to be the leader of the world. Well, in Washington, in the United States, that would be the president of the United States. So in his mind, that would be the outcome of the goal of Apollo. You know? And thinking, oh, all of, all of Washington is all designed for me. You know? Every bit of it is all designed for him. You know? This is destiny playing out. You know? And as he enters in, he's, he's going down the golden stairway, Trump Tower, you know. You know his his son-in-law comes out of 666, you know, his, his great mansion, you know. And this entire process is built on the reality that you're watching the movie of Satan. Satan's externalization, the witnessing. And every single day from that day on, when he came out to say he wanted to be president of the United States, all of a sudden, he was put in a holy place and judged. Because it's all about karma. And he, he has no idea karma exists. He has no idea God exists. He has no idea, you know, he tries to do something that's 100% a lie, that anything would ever come up that would be 100% the truth that would conflict with his lie. Nothing, nothing like that exists. That doesn't... It doesn't go inside of his brain, but it is the truth. It is the truth. A lie cannot exist in the same space as the truth. Cannot. Yeah. And everybody is aligned to the truth cellularly. Cellularly. Yeah. We all have knee-jerk reality toward the truth. We just need to be purified, cleansed, healed. Yeah. And that happens by me externalizing the devil and externalizing groups that are just so blatant, like the Dalai Lama comes out and says, oh, Dorji Chundin, he's an asshole, he's a devil. Uh, says the craziest things, makes millions of people want to commit suicide. And at the same time, everybody's going, you know, why would he do that? Yeah, even the Tibetans are picketing the Dalai Lama. You're not the Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama would not do this. Dorji Chundin is the follower, the protector of Tsongkhapa. How you say these things? How is it possible? Yeah, It's possible because this is an astral plane. He's part of the fallen angels. And he's being healed because I'm incarnated. And there's only one Lord of this world. There's only one Lord of heaven. 
And that's the truth. So I'm just like having a ball. Yeah. Where before you'd think, well, you know, Jesus, you can get in a lot of trouble, you know, and dark people are going to come after you. They're so caught up in their karma right now. They're so caught up in their karma. They can't even imagine I exist or that I would threaten them in any way, shape, or form. It'd be the biggest ha-ha inside their consciousness. You could not say it to them. You could not show it to them. There's nothing you could do to get them to agree that I'm a threat to them. Nothing. Yeah. Because they're in karma, and I am in control of karma. So they don't see me. Yeah. They have no interest in me. And they're caught up in their time. They're in the state of destiny. Yeah. No one knows that the Lord's relationship to the world is that the Lord goes back on track. Goes back on track. Yeah. We all have seven chakras. We have all these qualities inside of us, but they're latent. They're waiting. Yeah. But they're in us. It's just a matter of time. And once they're on track, there's no possible way evil can surface or manifest or evolve. Yeah? Can't stay in existence. Yeah? Because people are becoming soulful. And the expression of the soul is what creates karma. It moves and creates the element of karma to manifest because the soul is dharma. Yeah? Your goodwill in action when you're the soul. Maybe a little bit of goodwill, not the best goodwill of all goodwill that could possibly be, but at least it is goodwill in action. You're not channeling Satan. You're trying to make it through. You're being peaceful. You're doing your best. You know, you're safe. And you're not harming anybody. Yeah? Because I'm out there dragging the tail of the demon, throwing him in a place called mar lago so that we can all go, mar lago and imagine, mar is really not a place he wants to go to because it has no golf course. In your mind, you might think, mar lago wow, that's got to be one of the biggest golf courses you can imagine. Ah, look at the video. Look above it. There's no golf course there. Nowhere. This is a little backyard, a little front yard. That's it. That's it. And then there's neighbors. And that's it. It's not where he wants to be, it's where I put him. Yeah? Because there were a great deal of other demons who were just down the road from him. And he needed to be in that circuit, in that flow line. Yeah? So everybody has the same karma getting in and out of cars, getting out of bed, watching TV, ceremonial magic. And they're put into it and they have no idea that they're in it. They have no idea. They think that they're living the high life. You know? They think, oh, my Betty, my best friend over here who likes little girls gets away with it and I can just go to his island and live our life and do the things we do and I could live with cocaine and people who work with cocaine and make millions and billions of dollars from cocaine. That's what Trump did. His biggest funder, the biggest funder in his life was a major cocaine dealer out of Florida. That's where he got most of his money. And you're going to find this out when they do the taxes because it leads back to individuals that he had to pay off and individuals that he received enormous amount of money from. And these people were prosecuted and found to be cocaine dealers. And the money that came from there was cocaine. Yeah. So he's, he's a mafia all the way. All the way. Yeah, he's just not Italian, you know. We just didn't expect it, you know. He's a Don. Don. Don's a Don. What do you know? <laughs> yeah. So we've got all kinds of shit going on, you know. But I got demons, and they have tails, and they have horns, and I wrestle them. Yeah. And they get tired, because every day I wrestle them. So you know this guy here, I've been wrestling him for quite a while. A total of $49.3 million. That's what the jury in the defamation trial of conservative talk show host Alex Jones ordered him to pay 
the parents of Jesse Lewis for claiming the Sandy Hook shooting was a hoax on his show. Sandy Hook is a synthetic, completely fake, with actors, in my view, manufactured. 20 children and six adults died in the school shooting nearly 10 years ago, including Jesse. His parents say they filed the defamation lawsuit after years of harassment because of Jones' lies. I can't even describe the last nine and a half years of the living hell that I and others have had to endure because of the negligence and the recklessness of Alex Jones. My son existed. Jesse was real. I am a real mom. On the stand, Jones said he was wrong and his actions were irresponsible. It was, especially since I've met the parents and uh, it's 100% it's, it's real. But the InfoWars host was accused of lying under oath several times, including about the money he has. You must tell the truth while you testify. This is not your show. While Jones has filed for bankruptcy, the parents' lawyers said he and his company are worth up to $270 million. Still, they were pleased with the $4.1 million in compensatory damage awarded by the jury yesterday and the $45.2 million in punitive damages today. Devil, devil, devil. Yeah, lots of devils, people. Devils are real. Devils are real. Don't become one. Yeah? Devils are humans. Yeah? His mother loved him. Yeah? True. Honest to God, he was a cute little kid. Hitler was a cute kid. You know? You're all human beings. But will you turn out to be a devil? You know? When all the opportunities come your way and your past life comes back around, yeah? Will you go back and find league in your legion? Yeah? And build on that with hate and channel. Begin to channel, like dramatically channel. You know, that's what happened. Yeah? We had people that were channeling the dead. We had people who were channeling ETs. We had people believing Sai Baba can take gold coming out of his mouth as an egg, you know? We had people believing shit. Yeah, and it's all complete lies, lies. And there was no way because it was religion. You know, you're going, well, it's God, you know. God should be able to do that. Can't question that, you know. Yeah, so every single thing. Imagine, here we've got, we have this GOP, you know, the Republicans. And, and they, the hate is so intense, you know. And... So we're trying to pass bills. And we're going, okay, we're, we're going to try and we've got all these billions and billions, trillions of dollars. Money that we can help with people who are not able to afford insulin, you know. Have to pay so much money they couldn't buy groceries so that they can live, so that their kid can have insulin. Yeah. They, their whole life was based on their medical bills and their, their pharmaceutical needs. And there was no way that they can carry it out. Yeah. So a lot of the Republicans wanted to do nothing about that. Just let the big farm companies continue the rising of this process. Even though these are things that people need every day, every hour. Every day, every hour. So we, we tried to make a bill. Making it so that you can't charge more than $35 a month. $35 a month for insulin. Can't charge more. You can't charge more than $2,000 a year for insulin. Yeah. Dramatic. Well, this is what happened. 37 million people in our country have diabetes, and it's absolutely wrong that many of them cannot afford the insulin they need to live. I've heard from people in my state who risked their life and rationed their insulin to make ends meet, all while drug companies are jacking up prices. We have an opportunity here to make a difference and permanently cap insulin at $35 a month. 
It will save money. It will save lives. This should not be a hard vote to cast. On this vote, the yeas are 57, the nays are 43, three-fifths of the senators... It did not pass. ...chosen and sworn not having voted in the affirmative, the motion is not agreed to, the point of order is sustained, and the language will be stricken from the amendment. So, what happened after that? Yeah, the FBI went to mar lago and the devil got confused. Couldn't think clearly anymore. Couldn't channel the way he does. You know, there was an opening for us to go back, pass that bill again. While the devil's confused. Yeah. The devil does what he does because he's amused. Simply amused. He doesn't want the money. He is only amused. That's how the devil works. The devil uses people like puppets, and he's amused by that. And if you're not loyal to him, you're not his puppet, he's no longer amused with you. And he destroys you. Yeah? If he doesn't like the document, he'll throw it in his mouth and chew it and swallow it. He'll force you to throw it down the toilet, even though it is a major law that you're breaking. And you know it. But, you know, what do you do in a moment like that? The president's telling you to push this shit down the toilet daily. Burn it in the fireplace, he says. You know? And we haven't heard. We haven't heard that from people yet. Yet it happened. And we're going to hear it. We're going to hear it. Yeah. So the devil is very much wrapped up in his own drama. And his thing is that he wants to make drama in other people's life and his drive, life has to be perfect. Yeah, he has to be the Magi. Yeah, of this world, he's always been the Magi. The Magi people. Yeah, the beautiful one. The golden spoon. Trump Tower never loses. Always a winner. Follow this guy. He's it. Chosen. Even the Christians say so. Yeah. He's a mad guy. He's a black magician. Yeah. That's just what it is. Yeah. And that influence affects all of you. So, I know all this shit. And I know that if I can get as many courts tackle his ass and put him into chaos to the point to where he's surrounded in the last fibers of chaos in his own home. Yeah? Where his safe is taken out and all the things he believes he can get away with, he can't get away with at all anymore. Not at all. And that's just driving his, his, his field of I'm in control, you know, crazy. You know, so that opens a door for us. Yeah, for the hierarchy to step in and make a move. Yeah, so we pass bills that will last to the year 2040, 50, 60, 70, 80. Yeah, bills that are so far in advance, trillions of dollars of investment happening so fast while the devil is being tied up. So he can't do anything about it. He can't. Inject this one out. In Washington, President Biden scored another major victory with the passage of a landmark climate, health care, and tax bill in the House. It passed this evening strictly along party lines with all Republicans voting against it. CBS's Scott McFarland has more now on what's in the bill. Every Republican voted him? against it. Months of negotiation, which stalled and derailed several times, finally reached a destination. The motion is adopted. The U.S. House sending nearly three quarters of a trillion dollar spending plan to President Biden's desk. I'm proud to support this bill because I believe it delivers for the American people. It's also the largest climate change legislation in U.S. history. $369 billion for clean energy programs, including tax credits for those who buy electric cars or make energy efficient upgrades at home. 
more than $300 billion to pay down the deficit and giving Medicare power to negotiate lower prescription drug prices to help pay for all of it, a 15% tax on major corporations. Finally, you're requiring um, companies that make billions of dollars a year to pay a corporate minimum tax. That money, the fact that some of it is going to deficit reduction, also will help bring down inflation. That's our new America. Yeah. And it's based on Biden. Look back. Look back at the history of the presidents, all the presidents. Yeah. And you'll see Biden there. Yeah. Look at Clinton's period. Biden was there. Yeah. Look at all the other presidents. You know, Biden was there. He was a young senator. Yeah. Year after year after year after year. And then he went up for presidency, you know? During the time of Clinton and that period of time, he was very interested in the position of president. Not something that was just pushed on him because he would be the best person. It's because he has been trained. He is specifically trained to be a president. And he knows that, he knows it. He knows he's highly qualified, it's a job hard to do but he's qualified and he knows it yeah and that's it there's no arrogance in it there's nothing you know like i'm the best you know i gotta be the guy you know if i if i win or i lose that's just the way it works you know but if i was put in that position i would definitely do the best job any president would do and that's what we're going to find out historically this man will make so many dynamic changes of unification, yeah, from people all around the United States who will begin to become Democrats. Even though they're Republicans, they're going to vote for Joe Biden. And they're going to vote for other people who follow the direction of Joe Biden. And Joe Biden isn't out there, not even one bit, saying, this is what I want you to do, this is how it's supposed to be. None of that. Nope. He's busy helping to pass bills because he made a promise that this is what's possible if we work within the government and we pass bills and we get this infrastructure manifested into the world, we will have a better world. We will not have any wars, yeah? And we will change the effect of the greenhouse effect, which would be worse than any nuclear war we would go through. The effect of the greenhouse effect, if we do nothing, would leave generation after generation after generation watching their houses burn down, watching floods wipe away their town, and they're constantly moving, constantly moving, because the earth is so inactive in the past and becomes extremely active. What happens if Yellowstone blows? And it's over 150 years behind when it's supposed to blow. What happens when Shasta blows? And it's 100 years behind when it's supposed to blow. And we know what happens, yeah? We've seen it, yeah? Even in America, it happens. You know, so this shit's gonna come especially during a bad greenhouse process when the environment is at its worst. Fires, everything, pestilence, yeah, drought. We have drought like you can't imagine it. Look at our situation. We have drought, and if we don't change our minds, that the human demand for water is pretty big. But all things considered, only around 10% of California's total water supply is actually consumed by people in the state's various towns and cities, like Los Angeles, San Diego, San Francisco, Sacramento, and all the others combined. The much larger consumer of water in the state is California's massive $50 billion a year agricultural industry that consumes about another 40% of California's total water supply. 
But there's a pretty good reason for this. Because California is one of the greatest bread baskets of the whole world. Blessed with an abundance of highly rich and fertile soil throughout the Central Valley and couple. So you see that green spot right there? It doesn't exist. It does not exist. Isn't that a trip? Truth is, it doesn't exist. It's all drought right now. All of it. All the reservoirs, all the lakes, Grand Canyon. It's not what it shows. Yeah. You see all that green is because there's grass from the aquifer that's underneath that's coming up from below. Well, there's no water below anymore because we put it into almonds and corn. Yeah. 80% of the almonds eaten in this world come from that location. Yeah. All the people who live in that location take up 10% of the water. 10%. Yeah. But the almonds take up the other 10%. 10% of the water. That's 20% of all the water. Yeah. And the rest goes to agriculture. 85% goes to agriculture. So that green doesn't exist. It's not really there. That's just something they're showing that that's what would be present. That's where all the plants are growing right now. And if it was really happening, then that's the way it would be. Yeah. But they're fighting every year. You drive down that road, you'll see signs everywhere. Don't take away our water. Yeah. And that's because they don't have water. The aquifer is the water. It's the water. And that, that water holds the plates together. The pressure of the plates. To maintain the earthquake. Yeah. That keeps things rolling quickly and nicely. Yeah. So that the earth can maintain itself in the process that it's in. Yeah. But when we get really dry, we create the atmosphere that changes. Yeah. We create all this stuff. And we have an ecological problem. We start getting involved in this area that I'm involved in, which has to do with this nosphere and the biosphere and the geosphere. Yeah. So all of these things are being messed up by Satan. Satan stands there and says, hey, you know, we don't want windmills, we don't want this and that, we don't want that. I just want to build buildings and I want you to give money, lots of money, you know. He'll send you an email every 15 minutes asking for $40. Yeah, Satan is like that. Satan does that. Yeah, his wife dies, he asks you to give him money. Yeah, that's just who he is. And it's, it's affecting our no-sphere. Because that is evil. That is evil. And evil is corrupt on the geosphere. It wants the oil. It wants the diamonds. It wants the gold. It wants the minerals. It wants the water. Yeah? And all the greedy farmers and everybody who's really a, a corporation. It's not what you think. It's not a family out there, you know, with a hundred acres. You know, plowing it every year, doing their thing, making a living. There are corporations. Yeah. And they're ran by GMO and all kinds of terrible things that rule the biosphere. You take the biosphere in a totally different reality. It's full of pesticides and it's full of terrible, terrible, terrible stuff. Yeah. Every time we grind down stone and everything out of the geosphere, we're ruining the biosphere. Yeah? So we're not allowing the breath, the movement, the vitality, the prana that comes from Earth to move. And we're creating disease on Earth, yeah? Which now we're seeing as floods and tornadoes and really terrible shit. Yeah. And all that is involved with Satan. It's all Satan. Yeah. So imagine, you know, I'm I'm I've got this guy. I'm not done with him yet. Yeah. 
I mean, I <laughs> he needs to be bounced off the wall for a little while. Yeah. You know, he needs to be pulling on his hair and bouncing and screaming and having a bad night, having a bad morning, having a bad day, having another court case, having to talk to stupidest lawyers on earth, you know, and, 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 and walk away and, and have that in his mind, have that in his soullessness. That's his life now. He lives in his own world, and his world is hell, literally. If there's a hell, that man's in it. Yeah, and he's got the whole world dedicated to him that he is persecuted by hell. That he's not from hell, he's not the king of hell, and he doesn't deserve to be in hell. No. Yeah. He's persecuted by hell. By hell beings, the FBI, you know, the Justice Department. I mean, really, how far do we take this movie, you know, where we listen to someone say, yeah, the FBI, we all got to take down the FBI. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's not going to work, let alone you want to take over the whole freaking government. You know, is that likely? It is when you're totally crazy, when you're insane, and you have a idealistic belief system. A six-ray belief system makes you see things in that small window, an ideal. And that's the one thing that keeps us from ever evolving in technology or any advancement whatsoever, is that sixth ray holding on to the ideal. And we can't go outside of it. We have to stick to it. Yeah, and everybody gets attracted to this process of that sixth ray. Yeah, imagine I'm on this earth. Yeah, I got a great sixth ray. Yeah, my sixth ray is really great. It's got nice things coming out of it, and those things are like Santa Claus. Yeah, that's my sixth ray. I'm a giver. I'm a lover. Yeah. I'm not the person who destroys. I'm a person who destroys and builds. Yeah. I take what is and turn it into what it can be. Yeah. And you're surprised over the fact that, whoa, it, this does happen. You know, we are going to get free health care. Yeah. We are going to get better roads. We are going to have cars that drive themselves and no more accidents. Yeah. We are going to get rid of poverty. Yeah. We are going to allow small homes. Yeah. We're going to allow all this because of cooperation. The Holy Spirit and cooperation. So imagine, you know, I have, I have my sixth ray, and my sixth ray goes into a process where I sense humanity. And I sense what would make a happy camper? Yeah. What makes people happy? Yeah. Because what is Shambhala? Shambhala is Happy Valley. It's the whole planet. Happy planet. Yeah. Happy, happy, happy. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. That's what comes from the Lord. The Lord gives you so many gifts so fast. Yeah. And so many people you know, changing right before your eyes. You know. Caring and sharing and feeding people and giving people shoes and clothing and cars and all kinds of stuff. All over the place. Look it up. Look it up. Go to YouTube. People giving away clothes. Look it up. You'll find hundreds and hundreds of people going out, giving away shoes, giving away clothes. And they're doing it on YouTube. And YouTube pays them because people go, oh, it's a wonderful thing. I like that. I like that. You know? So these people are making like twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 a month. And they can go out and buy more shoes and give them away. Nice, isn't it? That's my sixth ray. That's how my sixth ray works. Yeah? There's no astral plane in the sixth ray. All there is is devotion and service, sharing, caring, giving, and loving. And the other side, it's all about devotion and ideal, you know? And are you committed, you know? And, you know, all these 
the lowest part of what the sixth ray is. But you got you got to have love. You got to have caring. You got to have sharing before you even get to any of that stuff, or you're not going to do it right. Yeah. So that's what's going on in the world. We're getting a different scenario. So now we had a problem to where things are in, in, in this demonic scenario and you got all these people in Washington that are you know, literally working for the devil, literally working for the devil. And we bring these bills in and say, you know, hey, you know, burn pits. What do you think, people? Burn pits? Is that all right? You know, military, Iraq, Iran, military, away from home, you know. You got shit, you got plastic, you got everything you got, you throw it in a burn pit. Your tires, you throw it in a burn pit. And everything you got, no trash, no place to put trash. Everything you got, every toxin known to man, put in a burn pit. And where's a burn pit? About 25 feet from your tent. Why? Because you're a military place and you gotta keep a border ground secure. You can't put it way out there, you know, or be away from everybody because that's too dangerous. Everything's got to be bibwhack. Everything's got, I've been in the military, I've been in the Marines, I've been in the Navy, I know this shit, and I don't, you know, it's not my life, but it's our life. Yeah? And I fought for everything to make everything healthier and safer while I was in the military. And burn pits, Agent Orange, all that, I was fighting to get something done about it. Because this has been going on since the beginning of military. You know, since living in a forest. You know, where are you going to put your shit? How are you going to get rid of it? Burn pit. Everything. Yeah. So we had an, an opportunity to do something about what we haven't done since Vietnam, since all the wars. We haven't done anything about the poisons that the military picks up while being in the military. Yeah, Agent Orange, burn pits, everything. It's terrible. And it, it used to be where you'd have to come in and you'd say, oh, yeah, <coughs> yeah, I can hardly breathe. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the doctor would say, yeah, well, a lot of people can't hardly breathe. You go, how do I know that that's from Agent Orange? Maybe you have asthma from childhood. Yeah, and that's how they looked at it. That's how they looked at it. So we passed a bill where you don't have a right to look at it that way anymore. If I say, I got it from Agent Orange, and I was in Vietnam, and I served during that period of time, and you owe me. Yeah, and this is going to be done. And we passed billions and billions and billions of dollar bills in order to get this to happen. Yeah, but what happened in the beginning? They say no. Say those health care and disability benefits will specifically help millions of veterans exposed to toxic burn pits and chemicals during their service. The Senate approved the bill overwhelmingly before, but it did hit a roadblock as Republicans made late attempts to change the bill. Let this not happen again. The good Can you imagine that? So what did I do? Sent the FBI to mar -Lago. Yeah. Get everybody all whipped up in this crazy idea that we're out to attack. You know, the war's begun. We're capturing this motherfucker. We're going to take him down right now. That really freaked him out. Everybody. Just, whoa. Can't have the police. <laughs> police. <laughs> Can't have the FBI be the FBI, you know, can't have courts carry out their justice, you know, can't do that, yeah. So, in comes mar lago freaks the guy out, we take that bill, we run it right back in. Let's vote on that again, folks. Anybody want to try? Ah, it'll never pass, ha, <laughs> ha, you know. <laughs> We all gathered together, and there are more Democrats than there are Republicans. So every single one of us said yes, and we passed it. And we've been passing every single one that way because we're more. 
Yeah? There are more good angels than there are bad angels. And that is a phenomenon that is not supposed to be existing. Yeah? The House of Representatives is supposed to be taken over by the opposite political party. That's normal. It's usually what it's kind of like a, a compensation of battle. You know, we're going to make you lose. We're going to get back to house, you know, even though you got a presidency. Yeah. But this is the first time that didn't happen. And it's coming back around to where we could lose. But in reality, we're going to gain seven. Going to gain seven. That's amazing. That's overwhelming. Yeah. And Biden is looking good. He was down at 35 percent. He's up at 40, 41, and 42 right now. And this is, we haven't even taken out the devil yet. You know? And we got a lot more bills. We have a trillion dollars worth of bills we must spend. We have to write bills, get them in there, and say, okay, now this is where that money is going to go. Well, let's get it going. Sign it, and we begin the process the following week. Spending that money immediately. Yeah. So we still have at least six months of bills we have to pass in order to get all this to work correctly. And it's going to happen. Nothing can stop us. The devil's caught. Yeah. The tail of the devil is in his own teeth. He's chasing it. He didn't know he had a tail. He didn't know he had horns. Yeah. But now, what the shit is this? What the shit is that? What's going on with me? What's this back here? You know? He's really having those experiences. He, he's not seeing himself as a god anymore. He's seeing himself that God found him. And God is judging him. And evil does not win. And I will meet him and shake his hand before he leaves. And that will be documented in history. That Jesus the Christ took out the devil, pointed at the devil, and then the devil dies. And everybody gets to witness it. And it's the beginning of a new world. Yeah. Because all the followers of the devil start shaking. They really trip out. They start having exorcisms. They want weavers. They want to do soul therapy. You know, they want an exorcism cleared. They want to they become sane. If there's a possibility, they're more than willing to get back in line and do the right thing. That's just how it is. We are all good angels. You just got to take out the one that's causing the problem. And that's it. And we're doing that. Yeah. So I guess you can all see that, yeah? Yeah? All right. Democrats are still buzzing about the stunning Senate deal reached this week that would dedicate $369 billion to the fight against climate change and give a real shot in the arm to the Biden agenda ahead of pivotal midterm elections this fall. So nice. And we pass this. Um, this is my cell phone. Um, Trying to get it things straight. my fingerprint each time I go to unlock it. Is this a weapon? She's trying to talk to a manufacturing company that makes guns. Machine guns and other rifles and other things. And this is her comment. No, oh, ma'am. Can this fire bullets that shred people's vital organs, this phone? Uh, no, Congresswoman, it can't. Then why should this device require more steps to operate than your company's firearms, which have been used in accidental shootings, mass shootings, and homicides? There are very few people better at this than Katie Polza. And this is her without her trusty white bolt. The California Democrat faced off with two CEOs of major weapons dealers, and she explored how easy it is to own and operate a weapon versus her phone. Can this fire bullets that shred people's vital organs? This phone? Uh, no, Congresswoman, it can't. Then why should this device require more steps to operate than your company's firearms, which have been used in accidental shootings, mass shootings, and homicides? 
Congresswoman, uh, respectfully, uh, your cell phone doesn't generate internal pressures of upwards of 60,000 pounds per square inch. The, the operating system of a firearm is extremely dynamic, extreme high pressures, lots of moving pieces, and first and foremost, he's so smart. My time. These firearm, these fire, these fingerprint scanners are offered in some firearms. She's some manufacturers smarter. sell this, and they work. Your company and Mr. Daniels' company chooses not to. Let me demonstrate again how long this takes. It's instant. It's instant when I pick up my, my phone. Yep. And we're getting this point across. Yeah. The whole process of there being guns, guns holstered on your body, machine guns, you're walking around, you know, all that stuff. It's just a movie, folks. Just a movie. It's there because Satan is still in charge. And this is his legion. And they have to express their power, their last days. Yeah? And they're going to come out like this. They're going to act like, you know, yeah, but what the heck? We're in charge. Follow us. Yeah? So here's what we're doing. The Conservative Political Action Conference, or CPAC, kicks off in Texas. Now, the usual speakers will be there, Donald Trump, Steve Bannon, Ted Cruz, and so on. But so will a controversial foreign leader, Hungary's Viktor Orban, whose government is accused of undermining women's rights, LBGT rights, controlling the media, and much, much more. We're externalizing devils, yeah? These people are hidden behind the scene. They normally don't get put in position to be caught, yeah? But this is a really bad devil. And guess what? I mean, this guy, he's in league with, with uh, you know, Hitler. He talks about all the Hitlerian relationships of how Hitler believed that certain races shouldn't be together and certain things should be ruled in order to make sure immigrants doesn't come into your country and the reasons behind it, all that, KKK kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, this is the, he wrote books on it. Yeah. So the GOP goes, that's our guy. That's our guy. Hey, we're having a GOP convention. Let's put him in there with Trump. I did. I really did. It's been the Conservative Political Action Conference, or CPAC, kicks off in Texas. Now, the usual speakers will be there, Donald Trump, Steve Bannon, Ted Cruz, and so on. But so will a controversial foreign leader, Hungary's Viktor Orban, whose government is accused of undermining women's rights, LBGT rights, controlling the media, and much, much more. Sinan's Ben Wiedemann is live in Budapest. Ben? Yeah, John, despite all of that, uh, even the critics of the prime minister here concede that over the last 12 years, some of his policies have managed to help improve the lot of many Hungarians. Yet despite that, of late, as the economy has begun to falter, Viktor Orban has resorted to rhetoric reminiscent of some of the darkest days in this country's history. You could call it a meeting of like minds. Video from his official Facebook page shows Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban visiting former President Donald Trump Tuesday at his Bedminster, New Jersey golf club. On his way to this week's Conservative Political Action Conference in Texas. In league with the devil, anybody? Yeah. Like-mindedness? Yeah, characteristic somewhat similar. Yeah, all over the place. Dictator, dictator, tyrant, tyrant, dictator, tyrant, tyrant, dictator. And these are all friends of Trump. Okay, so who does Biden have as friends? Huh? You see him running off with dictators or praising dictators or getting loans from Russian or German banks and all kinds of shit, you know? No, no, he's just a politician trying to do his best to do the things that need to be done to pass bills that govern. He governs. And he knows what that means to govern, you know. 
So it would be good if we had a good president because we would have a lot of jobs. A lot of jobs. Well, can Biden do that? I don't know. We have some breaking news on the economy. Data shows U.S. employers added 528,000 jobs in July, more than double the 250,000 economists expected. The unemployment rate also edged down to 3.5 percent. Business reporter Alexis Christophorus uh, joined me earlier with her take. Let's listen. Uh, Alexis, the White House is taking credit for this positive jobs report. Um, break this down for us. Well, Diane, any way you slice it, this is a stunningly strong jobs report, better than even the most optimistic economists were expecting. We added 528,000 jobs in the month of July. That was more than double what economists were expecting. The unemployment rate dipping to three and a half percent. That's exactly where we were in February of 2020 before the pandemic hit. So we have now regained all of the jobs lost during the pandemic. Where did we see the strongest jobs growth last month? It was in hospitality and leisure. So the airlines, the restaurants, the hotels, as we start to book those trips and have more experiences than going out and buying stuff like we were during the height of the pandemic. Also, business and professional services and healthcare hiring in those areas continue to be very strong. But you know, Diane, when you look at this report overall, it is hard to say the economy is in a recession when you are creating these many jobs. It seems as though we have an economy economy that has an inflation problem, but most certainly not a jobs problem. That's right. And it's only going to get better, a whole lot better. Imagine you invest in solar billions and billions of dollars, right? You invest in solar. What's going to happen if you invest in solar when you got a president that says, oh, you know, what's solar? Why would you want solar? Solar is for stupid people boost an already booming business. According to Washington State University's energy program, between July of 2020 and January of 2022, the number of buildings with solar power in the state jumped 32 percent in just a year and a half. And he expects more nonprofits to get solar panels, like Olympia's hands-on children's museum. For the first time, federal grants would be made available to nonprofits. Hafner says he's glad Congress appears to have found something everyone can agree on. Solar's always had good support from both sides of the aisles, because whether you're talking about jobs or the environment uh, or domestic manufacturing or other factors as well, they can you know, agree that this is good for the economy and good for the environment. That is right. Yeah. So we are in a process to where a lot of technologies coming together. We're going to put together chips where we had to do all of our chip manufacturing. Well, we just put together billions and billions and billions of dollars for engineers to start businesses to make chips. So we don't buy any chips from anywhere but America. Yeah, and that that will make things so fluid because your washing machine has a chip, your phone has a chip, your everything has chips in it. And when you can't get chips. People working in the manufacturing plant can't go to work. Yeah, they can't fulfill those jobs that we're saying that we're getting so many of. Well, multiply that by 500. That's a lot, and that seems extreme, but it's not. Yeah, we have over 340 million people in America. Yeah, and many of those people, majority of those people, you know, are highly qualified, capable people. And they need a creative outlet. They need to be able to make good money and live a good life and go through the things they need to do. But they don't have the opportunity to go out and start building tiny houses. There is not a, a government that says, we will give you $30,000 materials and land to build your own house. Yeah, And we will pay for the contractor who will come and help you build that house, just like President Carter. Yeah, you remember President Carter? Yeah, where he goes off and builds houses with people? Well, that's the same infrastructure plan that I'm putting out, that we do this for everybody. And that you can't build your house, we get a contractor to build it for you at a specific rate. Yeah. And the house never goes above that. And the quality control is built into the house. 
You get solar, you get electronics, you get batteries, you get the whole trip. Even collect water. Yeah. Even even your air conditioning, your heating is all built within the system. So every house is sustainable. Yeah. And that's that is imagine doing that at about a fifty thousand dollar budget for a two bedroom house. Yeah. Totally capable. Totally capable if we do it in America. Yeah. Our materials come from America. Yeah. Our people, our workers are from America. And it's our house. You know? You're you're getting a three hundred thousand dollar house and you're paying only sixty to seventy thousand dollars for it. You just saved your whole life. Your whole life of working hard and not getting much for it. Being in debt. All that's gone in the future. Yeah? Can you see what I'm saying? Yeah, this isn't a utopian situation. This is a plan. It's a plan. It's the way I see it. And the way I see it is the way it turns out. Yeah. It's, I'm, not, I'm not ruling anything. I'm not like super genius. You know, I am just who I am. I'm Jesus the Christ. And I can see God's plan. And I see that plan being worked out. And I can explain the whole thing to you to make you feel more comfortable. So that you'll support the time it takes for this plan to come in together. Because you have to see the reality that Satan exists and Satan was captured. And Satan is being put up in front of your face every day as a criminal against humanity. Espionage. Stealing money from children. Never paying taxes. Every bad thing you can imagine a person could do. Raping children. Everything. He did it. Yeah. And he should spend the rest of his life having that shit put back in his face and ask the question, did you do that? Can you prove it? Hmm. Let's put you back in jail for a while. <laughs> I already spent 10 years and I'm downright dead. I'm 86, you know. Ah, oh, you're looking good. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's real. This is real. We found Satan. I told you. And I've been working on this for a long time. I know reincarnation. I know people from past lives. I do not just know masters. I know the evil ones. And I know how to capture them. Yeah, and I did a great job of it. Yeah. So now we need to align to what are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's not about drinking anymore. You know, we can't go partying and eating cake every day. You know, because that's how we would have fun. We'd all get together and eat a lot of food, bring a lot of little potluck, you know, and get fat and ugly and die. But I say, no, you can't do that. Now you got to leave that out. Got to have fun some other way. So what are you going to do? How are you going to have fun? Can't just have sex. That ain't going to work. Sex is not fulfilling. Life is fulfilling. Having a life, living a life is fulfilling. Yeah? So here's my opportunity for you. I'm going to bring into the world a whole new world of transportation. Electric trikes are popular nowadays, but a recumbent electric trike is a unique breed of trikes that carries forward a different appeal. Plus, it offers a relaxed seating position, aerodynamic advantage, and more comfortable than ever to pedal. Some people do like recumbent trikes, and when it works in conjunction with electric power, it becomes an exciting three-wheeler. But there is a lot to think about before buying a recumbent electric trike, for instance, its frame, brake, battery, motor, riding height, and other features. That's why in today's video we're going to talk about the 5 best recumbent e-trikes based on the features and functionalities. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into the video. Electric trikes are popular. It doesn't matter if a recumbent... person is in a wheelchair, handicapped in any way, this helps them. They can still use it. Yeah. And they can get out on the beach, they can get in the mountains, they can go through trails, they can ride across the United States. 
on the roads that we're going to build. Yeah? We're going to have an infrastructure that will allow you to travel everywhere in the United States, everywhere in a trike with an electric motor. Yeah? And this isn't, this isn't new. It's been going on for a long time. Let me show you what goes on. In 2018, I developed these bikes, the trikes, you know, but my thing is that the trikes have to have motors because you need to get up hills. And what's the point of life is to be a happy camper, people. Happy camper. Happy camper. If you're riding an upright bike and your neck is all bad and your back is all bad and nothing's working right, you're not going to be a happy camper. Yeah. You need an alternative that'll make you a happy camper. Yeah. You'll be happy. I'm telling you. Sitting in a chair, sitting in a chair with your feet up. Imagine. You love having your feet up sitting in a chair. Yeah. And you just got your hands holding on to these little things and you're riding and you're going so smooth. Yeah. You got three wheels, not two. You're not going to fall over every time you stop. Yeah. You're just like sitting there in a chair. Looking at the birds and watching the trees and looking at the lake and having a great time. Yeah. You got a little bag right here. You can pull out a snack. Yeah. Drinking water over here. You can drink that. Yeah. And you can do this for hours and have a great exercise life. Super lifestyle. Yeah. So that's just part of us. Part of what we're going to do. But this is something that see where is it uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah here it is So I work on helping to develop this stuff and, and get it into the world. Yeah. So how I do that is by appreciation. Yeah. I see things that I appreciate because I can see a mass of humanity doing the same. And they don't have the discernment and the discrimination to do that. Yeah. Many of the people who were born in this cycle of time that I've talked about do not know how to ride bikes. A lot of people don't even know how to drive a car. They have such bad karma. Yeah, and it is bad karma. Yeah, because you you don't believe you have the freedom, and you won't allow yourself that freedom. You know, you just don't. You know, I mean, getting on a bike, taking a ride, man, that's free. Yeah, getting in a car, going someplace, coming back, and taking care of business, that's freedom. Yeah, but there's bad karma in people that keeps them from never feeling that they have the opportunity to be free. So then they make everybody else obligated so that they can be taken from place to place. Yeah, and we can't talk about bikes and we can't talk about this and that because, you know, it's just not part of the free flow of experience. So my job is to move people to a place to where even the most ignorant, the most karma-filled person can get and sit on a trike. No matter how bad your karma is, you could still sit and fit on a trike. Yeah? Just like an electric car that drives itself, no matter how bad your karma is, a killer, a destroyer, a terrible driver, could harm so many people in a life, die behind the wheel, because they got really bad karma. Yeah. So I'm going to give them cars that drive themselves and are safe. Yeah. Because the reason why a person kills a lot of people is because they believe they should. And that doesn't. That's not a blame. That, uh, that's not something they should go to hell for. Yeah. They, they are in league, in league with the devil. That's where bad karma comes from. Yeah. 
So you have an opportunity in this life and for every life here on out. You know, you're going to be given the jewels of heaven. Jewels. Yeah? And you don't deserve one jewel. But you're going to give, be given all the jewels. And every bit of merit that I have will be poured upon you. So you can receive those jewels. Because if you don't have the merit, you don't feel you deserve it. Yeah? And you'll just nitpick everything. I don't know. Yeah. And it's just bad karma. It's bad karma. Yeah. So the key is to do it constantly. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. That's what I'm doing. Where it just completely wipes away the devil himself. And it starts deteriorating the process of people who are just followers. Yeah of a deluded reality. They're just, they just can't make it through life. They have to do, either end up on the street or end up in a relationship and dependent upon that relationship and can't get out of it, no matter how bad the relationship is. Yeah, no growth, none, no growth. That's bad, that's bad. That's all because of bad karma, yeah? So learning new things is an opportunity to prove to yourself that you actually have good karma. Yeah? And that's what I'm going to help you get. Yeah? Because you've got the good karma. It's just that you've got a lying source that influences your solar plex to not receive the message from me in your heart. Instead, you get it in your solar plex. And that makes you picky. Does that make sense? You just get picky, you know? And it's just, it's a waste of your time and other people's time. Because yeah, you don't know the future. Yeah, You think it, that's where your pickiness comes from. But the truth is that I'm there, I'm working out things, and I am actually so far ahead of your reality, so far ahead of all reality, yeah? That I'm planting seeds, yeah? That... 10, 20 years ago I planted that are starting to surface today. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow, where did that come from? How is that happening? Oh, they're passing bills to give us free medicine. Oh, we're going to do this and that. Oh, we're not going to Mars anymore. How did that happen? You know, oh. you know, all these things come from my decision making. Decision making comes from higher consciousness inside of Buddha. Yeah, so everything that we all are, are bodhicitta. Yeah, we have the power of Buddha. We have the influence of bodhicitta. We can be bodhisattva. But we must learn to love life. And to do that, you have to love yourself. And you have to receive Jesus. You have to receive Jesus. Yeah? If you receive Jesus, you can handle love. You can handle the fact that all your pessimism won't work anymore. All your negative thoughts and all your bad actions, your 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 bad cooking or your bad this and that and you know you just wonder, you know, what's wrong with me? How come I couldn't do it? It'll all go away. And you're gonna find yourself a great cook. It just came out of nowhere. Had nothing to you being that you're a good cook. Because I can prove to you you're a bad cook. You always have been a bad cook. A terrible cook. Yeah? But if it's done in service, where your love comes in, then it's my influence that's coming in. And I'm a great cook. Yeah? I really take the time, you know, I love and care and share and do it right. Yeah? And that's what every single person does when they wake up in their soul. Yeah? There's not anything that doesn't make you a good cook. I mean, you know, you could be the worst cook in the world, but once you're healed, you have this magic power to no longer be the person you used to be. There's no reason for it. It just isn't there anymore. And you're a better person who has skills and less pain. Because all the pain came from your suppression of believing you're not really a valid human being. Yeah. Because everything Everything, a little pessimism alone, is what makes us all doubt 
that God exists and that we're valid human beings worthy of God's blessings in this world. And we can give reason for all suffering. Yeah? And we should not have that kind of consciousness. We should not be given, through pessimism, reason for things going wrong. You should be in your heart working hard to make sure everything goes perfect. Yeah? And the only reason it goes wrong is because you decided it will go wrong and you won't put your heart into it. You put your solar plex into it and you get exactly what you expect. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so let's, let's do some puja. We're going to do the great invocation. Okay, repeat after me. I invoke the power, the love, and the wisdom of my ashram, soul, and monad. To guide me into the right activity in the plan. To clarify and stimulate my mind. To transform and transmute my feelings and emotions. To energize and vitalize and heal my physical and etheric body. So there is a normal flow of energy in my physical and etheric body. Through this day and every day, I ask this in the name of the Christ to serve the one. All in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. spirit of peace be spread abroad. May humanity of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all mankind be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us do our part. issue forth. 
Let them bring secure to the sons of mankind. Let the rider from the secret place come forth. And come say, come forth, O mighty one. Let the souls of mankind awaken to the light. And may they stand with mast and tent. Let the fiat of the Lord go forth. The end of the woe has come. Come forth, O mighty one. The hour of service of the saving force has now arrived. Let it be spread abroad, O mighty one. Let light and love and power and death fulfill the purpose of the coming one. The will to save is here. The love to carry forth the work is widely spread abroad. The active aid of all who know the truth is also here. Come forth, O mighty one, and blend these three. Construct a great defending wall. The rule of evil now. Now is happenings of 
that time. Let vision come in insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavage be gone. Let love prevail. Let all mankind
So, we know what Trump has brought. Trump has brought great big buildings, big buildings with a big Trump on it. That's all Trump's ever bought. That's all he does. He buys things and he puts his name on it and he claims that's him. Well, he would have never brought you an electric car. He would have been the person who destroyed the electric car the person who doesn't finance shit like that. And all of his people who were in league with him didn't finance shit like that. So you lost it. You were not going to have an electric car. You're going to continue down the direction of fossil fuel with hybrids as its possibility, but not electric cars. No money would be put into the infrastructure of making batteries and sustaining the building of electric cars. You got to really think like that. So Elon Musk came along, realized both those things, made a deal with Samsung and others to buy large amounts of electric batteries over a 10 year period. So he locked it in at a price. He locked it in and had them all shipped in. We had millions and millions and millions of batteries sitting in stores, ready to roll to be put into his cars the moment they come off the run. So nothing would slow him down. And we saw that. Nothing slowed down the Model S. Nothing slowed down the Model 3. And he wasn't making batteries. But by the time he finished making the first set of Model 3s, he opened up his first battery manufacturing plant. Largest in the world. And he's making batteries. Lots of batteries. You know, so that problem that we had that would keep us from not going was a lack of sponsorship. Governmental sponsorship an individual sponsorship like GM, Ford, and others. They just wouldn't do it. Independent people trying to make cars were wiped out by GM, Ford, and others in the oil company. We've tried over and over and over again to start new companies, and they don't get started. They get into lawsuits. We've done that since the 40s all the way through. We've lost enormous numbers of really good cars that are not made by the manufacturing plants but made by independent, and they never made it. So we lost the electric car, and we got Trump. Trump was coming on board the year 2005. Trump was thinking, I'm going to be president, truly. He had already been an asset for the Russians since 1983. So his money and his service and situation of building up New York wasn't slowed down. It was all done by German assets and Russian assets. And that got him to 2016, where he's ready to build the Trump Tower in Moscow. Yeah, because he's got it all running. And where he gets his money is Arabia, Moscow, and 
Germany, not America. Yeah. He just rips off America. He doesn't pay taxes. He doesn't do anything. He just rips off America. Yeah. So imagine that's who this guy is. And could it could it be? Could it be? Could it be? Is Trump the Antichrist? Well, I'm telling you, I'm the Christ. I'm the real thing. I'm the Christ. I really am. I'm not joking with you. I physically took an incarnation and lived very hard all the way to right now. And I'm 71 years old and I'm still pushing shit. I'm still alive and I'm still up against the wall of trying to get the truth to penetrate this astral plane. This is all astral plane, all bullshit. It's hard to get it past that. The only thing that gets it past it is my constant vigil, constant vigil. So by the time we get to 2005, I'm not slowed down at all. And I'm dealing with the Antichrist. I'm dealing with Dalai Lama. I'm dealing with Sai Baba. I'm dealing with all the channelers in America, everywhere. Everywhere I went, every class I would give was astrologers and channelers and masters. All liars, all deceived demons sitting in front of me. And I'm supposed to give a class. I couldn't ask for more than $15 from these people because they were demons. And I said to myself, self, that's ridiculous. Let's look and see how much people make for doing what I do. What does Ram Dass make if he lectures? Yeah, Ram Dass is a nice guy. I'm not going to write books. I'm not going to do that. But I will lecture. I will give darshans. What does Ram Dass make? I find out he makes an average of $1,200 per person who attends for one day. And I thought, shit, are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. I can build so many monasteries. I can feed so many people. I could save the electric car and build my own electric car. So I decide that's what I'm going to do. So I s decide that I will do darshans and I'll do them everywhere. I'll do them in Europe, I'll do them here and there, and I will charge $1,200 for my darshan. And I take that money and I initiate this. Mm -hmm. I take $62,000 of that money from the first major darshan that I charge that much money in, and I get my own electric car company, Shambhala Electric Vehicles. I actually am buying them. I'm bringing them in from China, and I've got a company that's building them and manufacturing, putting the electric motors in, batteries. We're doing it. Yeah. My goal is to give us 400 miles, and this is what's going to happen. In the year 2025, you will see these very cars, cars that looked almost identical to these, and they will cost you $9,000 get you 400 miles, drive 75 miles an hour, and you do not need to go faster than that. It has a, a, a limit to it. So you can go real fast up to 60 miles an hour to get around cars, to get up hills. You've got all the torque, all the power you need. It's just that it's not a Tesla. We're not doing that. We're not wasting energy. The car is built to regen, regenerate electricity, and it's built not to use much electricity. So it uses probably one-third the amount of electricity of watts per mile that a Tesla would have used. And that was my plan. And yeah, that was my plan. I didn't, there was no Tesla, but I knew all about all electric cars, the weight ratio, how far you can go in so many miles with so many watts. You know, so that's something you couldn't figure out. You couldn't get it to work over 45 miles because the batteries and all the things that you had to do, you know. So, got on your company and put all my money. All I, I had a half a million dollars. I worked so hard. I did five darshans. And I took every bit of that money and threw it into an electric car company and bought the last remaining electric car as they all got destroyed. Yeah, like that. As the movie was coming out, I'm on the phone buying the last one I could find. And it had brand new batteries in it, so I was super happy. Yeah? So I'm investing in America. But that's not all I'm doing. I decide I'm going to build 
a monastery. A monastery. I'm going to continue doing darshans, and I'm going to take that money and build a monastery, the best monastery on earth, the most powerful temple that's ever been created. And every dime I get will go toward building that, yeah? not toward going and getting loans and things like that to pull it off. Yeah? I didn't get a loan to get into the car business. I didn't get a loan to build this monastery. Yeah? Everything was through what I do, darshans. Yeah. So imagine I get that rolling. Oops, there's, there's one, yeah. And my process is that I'm I'm helping to change your connection with Satan, the Antichrist. And you don't know what it's like to be with Christ, you know. So I bring in all this stuff. I bring in the electric car, which is being taken out. And at the very time it's being taken out, I'm putting it back in. So I'm saving you as you're being destroyed. The last moment that you're being destroyed, your entire future was being wiped out. I walked in and said, no, you get your future. Yeah, And it only costs so much money. And I worked every day to do it. And all the Tibetans are going, oh, no, the Dalai Lama, he's, he's telling us Dorji Chun did no good. And, oh, well, what are we going to do? We've been kicked out of Tibet. You know, we don't have any place to go. What do I do? I travel all the way to freaking Tibet. And I'll let them meet me. So this is a certificate to the teacher of the Dalai Lama. It says it right in here. Yeah. This is Lumbum Kamsen. Lumbum Kamsen is the Kamsen of Tsongkhapa, the teacher to the Dalai Lama, the founder of the lineage of Tibetan Buddhism of this age. Yeah. And in this letter it says that that's me. And they make me the senior Rinpoche of the monastery. And they ask me to bring the senior Rinpoches and Kempos into the world to create world peace. For me to initiate that as a Magi. To be the one who does that. And I go, uh, okay. I'll do that. Yeah. So I do. Yeah. I bring them. We do sand paintings. We go to England. We do what we do. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm also sponsoring the process of all of Tibetan Buddhism. Yeah? So I have to go from one monastery to the next, all over Tibet. Dema, Letong, I mean, you know, Amdo, you name it. You know, Patala, Lhasa, shit, I've been there. And not at this time. This is at the time when all the roads are gravel and all the cars really have seats that are dragging on the ground. And smoky, and the drivers don't know how to drive. They all lie, and they're terrible. You know, that's how I got around Tibet. Yeah, isn't that right? Yeah. And we couldn't breathe. We had no oxygen. We're traveling up, and we have no oxygen. They gave us inner tubes that had oxygen put in it. And we were supposed to breathe out of those inner tubes in order to get oxygen. That'll kill you alone. That'll kill you alone. Yeah. And for food. A nine-hour trip, nine to 12-hour trip, they brought four eggs, four hard-boiled eggs. And that was it. Remember that? Four. Uh, I take care of ourselves. I pack freeze-dried food. I pack everything. So when we stop someplace, I pull it out and make us a hamburger. You know, we have a really nice hamburger or we have an omelet. It's all pre-cooked and everything and a seal of meal. Remember that? Yeah, you know, so everything, you know, even though I'm dealing with Tibet, even though they do not have toilets, I carry, I have my own truck and it has its own toilet, you know, because I don't put up with this stuff. I don't put up with it. And it's humiliating every step of the way. I'm going into being enthroned and they're all going, what kind of Buddha are you? You need a toilet? That's like, you know, rich man stuff. You know, you're, you're, you know, you're stepping way out there into the material plane. I said, you guys are crazy. 
You're crazy. Don't even talk like that. You're stupid. You know, and the Rinpoche, after a while, he's really started getting pissed off at me. You know, because I'd be cooking for people. And Rinpoche's don't cook for people. I'd be in there cooking steak and remember that? Making everybody a nice meal, you know. And he'd come, no, 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 Rinpoche, you can't do that. No, 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 no. i said, get out of here, you know. Come on, you want <laughs> you don't do this? You got to be crazy, man. This is fun, you know. So it just every single thing from from whether it be these Rinpoches or you know the process up here with this guy, where I'm handing out tools and I have to make all the tools and travel into the monasteries and pass these things out because in ten years. They're going to be destroyed by the Dalai Lama, and they don't know that's coming. They don't know that he's going to claim Dorji Chungden as the devil. And that all their prayers, I mean all their prayers, are wiped away. And their monasteries with Dorji Chungden and the Tonkas and the ancient history is gone, tore down by the Dalai Lama, not by Chinese, but by the Dalai Lama. And they have no idea this is coming. And everybody, the teacher to the Dalai Lama was a follower of Dorji Chungjin every single life. But this Dalai Lama and Nail. But I give darshans and I would use that money, travel all the way to Tibet, and then build a stupa to save all the Tibetans in his freaking backyard. In his backyard. And he said, no, I, I won't give you money for it. I won't give you any money for it. I'm going, Jesus, you know. I'm stuck $220,000 I have to come up with to pay for this stupa, along with $25,000 to pay for the land, you know? And we're just going, Jesus, you know, come on, help out, Dalai Lama or other Rinpoches, you know? I, I'm, I'm totally open to you coming in and dropping some money in here, but every month, every week, we were the only ones buying bricks, right? We were the only ones buying mortar. We were the only ones making stairs. We were the only ones paying for all the Rinpoches to make all the prayer things that went inside the stupa. And we had to pay for every single one of them. And not a dime came from anybody. We, they had to wait to do it because we didn't have the money. We had every week, we had to come up with $20,000. Every week. Can you imagine doing that? You know, a poor place, you know, selling weavers and tapes and CDs. And I make a commitment to where I'll do this. And we don't have any means to do those sort of things. But I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not greedy. I don't, I don't have a mansion. I, my money doesn't go toward things that it shouldn't go toward. Yeah. So it turns the wheel that changes our ability to get to where we're at today. Now we have captured the Antichrist. And you, all of you, are almost ready to commit to the reality that the Antichrist does exist. And that the Antichrist must be recognized fully, 100%, as a real living devil. Not as, you know, oh, maybe, nope, nope, he's it. He's the devil. And in that devil is the birth of all the other devils. All the other devils are born out of this devil. Yeah? So there's a legion. A legion. That's why in Satanism, everybody becomes Satan. When you become a Satanist, you don't, it's not, you, you don't become a follower of Satan. You become Satan. That's the goal, is to become Satan. So all these people out there, they're in league with the devil and they're following, you know, this, this orange idiot, you know, that we all know, you know, is a liar and everything that's bad. But because we're, we're unable to s express the spiritual quality of the Holy Spirit, we can't label him, therefore we can't see or label the Christ. You must see both of them at the same time. They're here at the same time. There's no, it, it doesn't work any other way. I'm only here because he's here 
And I'm here to get rid of him. Yeah? And that frees you. Yeah? So it's a difficult, difficult process for everybody because you, you must come to a clear picture that that is Satan in a physical form. Yeah? And you need to really think it, not in a, oh, no, it's Satan, oh, no. No, the phenomenon, the incredible phenomenon that the, the very deity, the entity, the one that's ruling hell on earth from the beginning of time is that guy. That guy. That's the way I see it. And I don't see it like, oh, I'm going to get your ass. You know, I see it. That, that is who you are. And by me knowing that, the light penetrates you. And now you can't con anybody anymore. You are Satan and you will be known as Satan, the incarnation of evil. You will be known as that. It will be your title. No longer will you be planetary logos or anything of any power, like president or something like that. No, he'll be Satan, the Antichrist, who died on such and such date, killed by Jesus the Christ. Yeah, enjoy. Thank you very much.